is it too early to be griping too soon for another rant video i don't know just putting this stuff out there hoping it lands to serve <laughs> it's serving me somehow I've been thinking about how we don't listen to each other very well. You know, I think one of my last ranting videos was on a similar listening, not listening, observing, not observing kind of topic. And here's another one. Here's another one with an invitation for you to notice how you respond to people. Not like everyone. Just choose a day or choose a morning or choose an hour and you got to listen. I mean, this is what it sounds like inside my yurt. It snowed massively two days ago. And what you're hearing, I think you can hear it, is the snow as it's um, coming off the trees and hitting the top of my yurt. Speaking of listening, notice if you would, if you would consider this invitation how you are responding to people. From where are you responding? Is it automated? Is it thoughtful? Is it necessary? Is it kind? Is it useful? Is it about you? Is it about them? Is it about creativity? Is it about defense? Is it about one-upping? This is what this is what I want to get to. There's a Saturday Night Live skit I think it's Kristen Wiig that plays the character who comes on scene and no matter what anyone says she won she one ups them she's like yeah so you've been to outer space I've been to Mars I've been to Jupiter I've been to just she got this really cool voice and she's always um twiddling with her hair and she's invented this and invented that and no matter what the other person says well she's just magnificent in every way shape and form and what happens to the person who's speaking when you don't give space for them to be in their experience, to have the fullness of their expression, even if it's just for 30 fucking seconds without you relating, contributing, defending, one-upping. I have some examples recently and I've just noted that maybe this is just my trauma the way it's unfolding ding 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 for sure this is what's happening and as I'm unraveling my own consciousness this is what's coming forward for me to notice I'm sharing it to support myself and maybe to support you and paying attention growing in consciousness and expanding our natures to invoke more compassion and more space more space for the other to be because right now we don't have that we don't have that people uh, don't know how to be silent they don't know how to listen with compassion and spaciousness because their unresolved stuff and their overwhelmed central nervous system doesn't allow them to doesn't allow them to which i understand but i still have judgments because i think it's been happening so regularly for me I'm just a little tired. I'm just a little tired of it. And I'm watching myself with the tendency to retreat and withdraw and get back into isolation in Hermitville because being with people can be very challenging when all, most of what I'm interacting with is unconscious um, energetics. And I try to be conscious of myself, and yet we're all growing. We're all expanding. We all have the invitation for the next iteration the examples, simple examples. Um, I was at work and I got a paper cut on my finger. And I was like, oof. I was in company with my coworker and I was like, ah, real time moment. And I was like, oh, paper cut. And I was kind of moving on with it, right? No big deal. It wasn't that bad. It was just like that sharp, you know, when was the last time you had a paper cut? It's like, ooh, it does draw your attention. And I was getting ready to hover right over it. I mean, right off of it. <laughs> And then this co-worker's like, oh, yeah, you should have seen the time where my hands were full of paper cuts, full of paper cuts. And I was just like, okay, why? 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 Why is this necessary? You know, when we do this, when we jump right on to somebody's share, there's no space for what they've expressed to go anywhere, to do anything. The energy 
it's pulled, it's taken immediately away from the injury, the insult, the incident, whatever, the experience, whatever it may be, as small as a paper cut or as large as a death of somebody that you love. It just pulls the energy away immediately as if we don't know how to share space with somebody who's going through something as small as a paper cut. Nothing really needed to be said, but that certainly didn't need to be said. I was at work. My father called me, which is so sweet and so rare, so rare. So I picked up the phone and we talked for just a few minutes because I was at work and I told him I loved him, got off the phone and a co-worker had overheard me and immediate response was, oh, that's so nice. My dad died, la, 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 this long ago in my arms, yada, yada, yada. Of course, I have compassion for that. I had empathy for that, but motherfucker what was that moment about what was that moment about uh, there was no space for me to get off the phone to feel in my heart to commune with my father to be grateful for that to realize <laughs> he's in his late 70s I'm not going to have this opportunity much longer when he will pick up the phone and call me none of that I get I, I got none of that because this person came into the experience had overheard part of my conversation and made it about them and made it about their loss and made it about their father and made it about their experience with death. I'm guilty of these things too, by the way. <laughs> Pot, <laughs> calling the kettle black, what I have done this too many times, but No one's really told me not to do it. I'm asking you not to do it. I'm asking you to give space to the speaker. I'm asking you to give just a little bit of space to the person who's in their own experience. Maybe it's a minute. Maybe it's two minutes. Maybe you can keep that information to yourself. Is it necessary? Is it kind? Is it helpful to share? And... For who? For who is it helpful to share the information that just pops out of you, unregulated? The other example that I had, all of these were in the last couple of weeks, maybe two weeks. I'm living in this beautiful yurt. It's not very um, winterized. <laughs> so when it freezes outside, my pipes get frozen. I'm in a second a stint of no water right now and the first time it was fine because the next day it got warm enough the pipes thawed and I had water I haven't had water in 24 hours I'm on the second day and no water it's really cool because it makes me slow down it makes me so appreciative of clean flowing running water I'm headed to the headwaters these days I'm loading up the back of my toilet tank and I'm flushing it that way I'm doing dishes in a different way and I have a, a, a barn close by that has um, heat and running water it's not that big of a deal it's a deal when it's not a deal and I'm adapting I'm handling it and it will be taken care of eventually until then I had a friend came over and I'm telling her that I was without water and her response to that was, whoa, when I had two babies, toddler and an infant, I, would, I had three months of no running water. And I was just like, okay, well, that's a story. That happened to you for sure. And you made it through. Oh, my God, that sounds terrible. But this is right after the awareness that I'm saying I don't have water. I didn't have water. It's not to um, discount their past or wanting to relate or wanting to share their story when you do it so quickly when you do it as a response to when you do it right on top of somebody sharing it diminishes it uh, devalues it disregards it disrespects 
it just says what you're experiencing isn't that big of a deal because what I experienced was way bigger of a deal. Dead dad, many paper cuts, three months with no water. So then why am I saying anything? Why am I expressing anything? Why am I talking to anybody? If people's response is going to be, that's not really valid. I've had worse than that. What are you even talking about? What you're experiencing and your existence hardly matters because I've been through so much and it's way worse than what you just experienced and what you're talking about. This is how it comes through the filter. This is the thought process that I'm battling. These are the demons that I get to wrestle with because it's time and time and time again. I've got my own tragedies, legit tragedies. They're not necessary to share unless there's a story that might support someone on their path. You know, for me, I try my best to be a good listener because when you listen deeply to somebody, it creates a sense of safety. It creates a sense of connection and communion and belonging. And of course, that's what I want for myself. But for some reason, this instrument and the trauma that I've had and my coping mechanisms and um, uh, responses have me in a listening phase and have me met by not that many awesome listeners. So I'm not sure what the remedy is. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a fix of it. And I think it's a real time moment just calling out, well, that's not what this is about. Just trying to get really lighthearted and creative and playful about it and just pointing out in real time um, that I, I don't want that as a response. I don't want you to one up the paper cut or the dad energy or the no water or the when I ran out of gas or when I lost my job or when that boyfriend betrayed me or when I fell down and broke my knee or whatever, whatever it is. Whatever it is, it's valid in and of itself for the person who's experiencing it. So to be mindful, what's playing out on the planet right now has us all in this really crunch, crunchy time. A lot of energy swirling, a lot of uh, energies pulling us out of center. So this is my rant. I hope it serves you to maybe slow you down when you do find yourself responding to somebody, especially responding to a compassionate, empathetic listener. We like that stuff too. We like to be listened to. We like empathy. We like compassion. And I don't want to be quiet about my experiences. It's nice to have people relate, but can there be more space for us kind-hearted souls? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe all of us will eventually make our way into the woods. <laughs> How are you listening? Is it kind? What are you sharing? Is it necessary? This is a theme. It's ongoing. And I love, love, love you. Be aware be tender, be present. I'll talk to you again later. Bye for now.